Yeah. All right then. Okay. So, uh, uh, greetings everyone. Welcome to today's session. Uh, as you said, uh, in 2023, we are developing leaders. And leaders are lovers. Sorry, no. Leaders are lovers. No, no, no. Leaders are readers. Okay, that's what I want to say. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So we, we have a, most of the vessels have all, if not all the vessels, have a library on board of uh, statutory books you should have on board. And this year, we're going to be reading a couple of books. Let's see how many books we can read. At least maybe we can do 10 or maybe let's say a dozen okay, or books that we can go through quickly. The idea about these books and the, the codes, uh, it tells us what the codes are, why we have what we have on board. So let me give you a, an example, all right? Let me set the pace uh, so that you guys can understand what why I'm going through this. So I, I visited a vessel uh, that used, uh, I don't know, most of you might have not used your man overboard um, arrangements before, you know, the boy and the smoke and, you know, the signal. Has anybody used their man overboard uh, arrangement in this class? Anybody? If you have to use it in real life. Uh, and I hope you understand what I'm talking about. The one on your bridge wing, right? So most people have it, but they never used it. So I've visited this vessel that have used it and they replaced the boy. I, I guess the one that they let go, they didn't pick it back. They couldn't pick it back. So they replaced the boy. So when I did my inspection, I realized that they used the wrong size of the boy. So uh, this, is, this is supposed to be like a question, but I will not make it a question. Normally, uh, all the boys, the live boys on the vessels, anybody knows the weight? Anybody just tell me the weight of a live boy? Mm, everybody has gone. You know. Somebody? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. What's this? Uh, are you with me? Yes, you right. me? yes, I can hear you. Okay. The one on the bridge wing, the man overboard should not be less than 4.4 4 kg. Okay. And the other? The, remain, uh, the, the others other? are 2.5. Should not be less than 2.5 kg. Okay, so why do we, why is it 4 kg? Why should not less than 4 kg? Uh, okay, just uh, to differentiate the man overboard and the others. I believe. Mm, okay. Well, probably not. That's not the reason. So you're right with the weight, but the reason is not uh, correct. Okay. So uh, I'll go. I'll go ahead and over the class. I hope Beatrice will be able to, you know, share some thoughts with us. So when I went on board, I saw that uh, this boy they put the 2.5 kg boy there. So I picked up as an observation, and they were looking at me like, ah, oh, we've replaced it now. We've replaced it. No, and I said, okay, let's open the LSA code. And we went to where the live boy section is. And we saw that what you're saying is correct. Four kg. And all of them were like, oh, you know. And for me, these are small things that should not be in an observation already. If they knew what it is and why it's there. So sometimes it might not be that you used it. It might be that, okay, maybe it's expired or it's broken. I need to replace it. If you don't know what it's supposed to be, you replace the wrong, you request for the wrong boy. The office will supply the wrong boy. You will keep it there. You probably have gone home, and the people on board will be the ones who get those kind of observations. I, I, I don't know if you get my point, right? So for me, I, it's not my, I cannot go on every ship. Inspectors cannot go on every ship. They cannot see everything. Uh, Captain Josh is there as well. You cannot, you know, every time you go on an inspection, you cannot see everything on board the vessel. So it's left, what we want to do, especially in 2023, is that those on board should know what is supposed to be on board why it's supposed to be there and with that if two three people from this class understand things and go and share with another two or three people and those two three people share with another two or three people you see that we will increase the the knowledge base of our industry okay so those are my idea now i don't want just to be shouting oh you must have this you must have this. i want people to know why they should have it and what they should have you know does anybody agree that this is a good idea anybody if you agree this is a good idea let me hear you please Okay, you guys don't agree is a good idea. Okay, I agree with you. You agree, okay. So that's why I want us to go this direction. When we finish, thank you very much. When we finish this LSA, we'll try the FFA as well, you know. So you, you guys will be familiar with, with what we are doing. All right then, so the, the floor is yours now. Um, uh, Beatrice, is she, are you still there or she's, she's gone out? I think Beatrice is, might be having some network issues there. 
Okay, I, do, I can't see her anymore. All right, so while Beatrice is not around, Devalisha said she has done a bit of, uh, you know, reading through it. So I think we should switch to Devalisha to, to help us with whatever she, uh, you, you know, I mean, guys, nobody wrote this book. Eh? I did not read my, I did not write it, sorry. So we, we are not expecting word for word, Robertson. We just need an explanation of your understanding. Thank you, uh, Devalisha. You can unmute yourself, please. Uh, hello, Divalicious. Can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Yes, you can go ahead now. Okay, so let's Beatrice uh, take the mic at the moment. Then we'll come back to Divalicious at some point. Okay, so the chapter one basically gave us some uh, definitions on um, mostly is on uh, free fall lifeboat. And it tells us, it also, before the definitions, it gives us the purpose of the LSA code. And it says the, it says that the purpose is to provide uh, an international standard for life-saving appliances as uh, required by SOLAS chapter three. And that the requirement uh, of the requirement of the LSA code uh, is mandatory. It became mandatory on the uh, first July, nineteen ninety eight. So then, uh, on the definitions, it tells us it defines uh, different uh, terms. Like uh, the first one, there is. Uh, effective clearing of the ship. So it, according to the code, that the effective clearing is the ability of the free fall lifeboat to move away from the ship site after a free fall launching without using uh, its engines. Then the other terms there, like the free fall acceleration, which is the velocity that is experienced by the occupant of the free fall or the, the rate of change of velocity that is experienced by those in the uh, lifeboat during the launching. So we also have uh, what is called a free fall certification height, which is the greatest height that the lifeboat is approved, is to be approved or measured from the still water surface to which the, to the lowest point on the lifeboat when the lifeboat is in the launch configuration. So, so am I to go ahead defining all of them? Uh, well, not really. It's just uh, your summary, to be honest. Uh, not, uh, oh, not actually okay. to write it. Just your summary. Uh, thanks. Oh, okay. Then, okay. After the various definitions, it the, it also tells us about the general requirement for life saving appliances. So, under the general requirement, we're told that the we are told about the temperature, the air temperature at which those uh, the LSAs should be stored, the colors that they are required to be, and the kind of materials that they should be made of. So for the air temperature, it says that the, it has to, the LSA materials has to be able to withstand or to be stored in an air, air temperature of uh, between minus 30 degrees Celsius to plus 65 degrees Celsius. And also that is a, in the case of personal life-saving appliances, unless otherwise specified, it should also remain operational throughout the air temperature range of 
minus 15 degrees Celsius to plus 40 degrees Celsius. Then it also highlights the that it should be fitted with retro reflective material where it will assist in detection and in accordance with the recommendations of the organization. So the retro reflective materials, are, they are, okay, they are materials that reflect, uh, that re when a beam of light is being directed at it, gives back the light in the opposite direction. And then the color, the color code, should be vivid reddish orange or at a comparably highly visible color on all parts where this will assist detection at sea. So it also talks about the, the requirement also talks about the, the material that where applicable it should be rot proof, should be uh, should be corrosion resistant and uh, shouldn't be easily affected by seawater, oil, or funga attack. So that is uh, basically chapter one. So all the requirements about the LSA, how they sh the material, the colors, and everything, we'll find that in uh, chapter one. Then chapter two then goes on to uh, specify the different uh, LSA. Can I ask a question, please? Okay, sir. Uh, so if I come on, if, if an inspector comes on your vessel and sees your pyrotechnics installed in a uh, black holy bag or, you know, black nylon, in a nylon, would that be correct? No, I think that would be wrong. Why? Because it means that it can be easily identified. It should be stored in a, in a position that it can easily be seen. So if it's in a black poly uh, bag, only the person that puts it there will know that that is what is there. Okay, so I think at this point is where we are supposed to tell people that those people that have their pyrotechnics in black poly bags or black lilacs in their ship, they should raise up their hand. Yes, so they are very wrong. They should raise their hand up, raise it up very high. And when you are lowering it, use it to cover it, put it on your head, from your head, cover your face, cover your face like that, cover your face with shame. Okay, so we don't want to see that anymore. Eh? All right, even if that's how they do it on your vessel or, you know, that's how you met it. So please change. Today is the day for you to change. Today is Repentance, uh, repentance Tuesday. Okay, all right. So thanks, thanks for that, uh, Beatrice. So let's go to chapter two. Okay, so, so the chapter two is specifies different uh, LSAs and it starts with the live boy. So the live boy specification. So it talks about the mass of the live boy that it should not be less than 2.5 kg. And then the, the outer diameter of the, of the live boy should not be more than 800 mm and the inner diameter not less than 400 mm. And also the, the live boy should be able to support a weight not less than 14.5 kilogram of iron in fresh water. And it should not uh, sustain burning or melting when enveloped in a fire for a period of uh, two seconds. And the kind of material the live boy should be made of should be a buoyant material so that it will be able to float. And then it has to be fitted with a grab line. The length of the grab line should not be less than 9.5 mm in diameter. And the No, not the length, the, the diameter of the grab line should not be less than 9.5 mm. And the length, not more than four times the outside diameter of the, of the body. 
not more or not less than four times? Not more than four times. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So um, just before you move on from this, I want to stress this, uh, that you see there's a di uh, diameter of the, the grab line, not less than this. These are very important. Okay, yeah, not well. less than. Yes, you mentioned that. I'm I'm stressing it for the people in the in the in the in the group as well. That so if you want to make a requisition, or oh yeah, yeah, you notice that the the lines of your live boys they are bristled, they are broken, and you want to request. You can't just put any line. or you know, it's not the line that they use in selling uh, ram during Ramadan, or the one they use in tying chicken during Christmas. There are requirements as per LSA code that you should follow, okay? If you do not follow it, even though you, your office has supplied it and someone comes, you're not in line. So you have to buy it again and you're wasting money. You're wasting time. You're part of people wasting uh, carbon for nothing. Eh? So that's why this is important. I'm stressing this so that uh, everybody in the class will understand why these codes are important, okay? Yeah, please go ahead, uh, Beatrice. Sorry to disturb you. Okay, then it also talks about the, the light, the light on the live board, that it shouldn't be a light that can be extinguished by water. It should be light that are water resistant. Then the color of the light should be white and uh, not less than 50 flashes and not more than 70 flashes in a minute. Also, the, the light should have a source of energy. And that's a kind of an inbuilt uh, battery. Yes, and should be able to withstand a, what they call a drop test. So the when you, I think, so please, what was that uh, drop test? Can you? All right, Th thanks for the question. Anybody wants to attempt that question from Beatrice? What will you understand by a drop test of the light boy? Yeah, Mark, please go ahead. I think your hand is up. Yes, well, I think it means because I'm I'm not sure I've done it before. So yeah. maybe, maybe for example, a live boil is being thrown if overboard, maybe drain um drills or something. So the light should not fall off. And even if it fell inside the water, it should not be damaged by the water. Yes, I, 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 that that's that's a tough, that's a good summary of, of what that means. So oh, yes, um, okay. the, fact, the fact that you're throwing it does not mean you should just, because if you throw it in the water and it damages, then what's the point? You know, we, we need to use it in water, not on land. So that, that explains it. Yes, thanks for that, Mark. Bye, right, Beatrice. Okay, so that is it for the live boy with light. Then uh, we have the live boy with, uh, with smoke. So the, the, the smoke, it should emit a smoke of visible color at uniform rate for at least 15 minutes. So the smoke uh, attached uh, there, to the Sorry, there, there's a music in the background somewhere. Yeah, sorry. All right, sorry. Oh, all right. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah go ahead, please. Yes. You said you were so talking the, about... I'm talking about the smoke attached to the live, the live boy with smoke uh, signals. So the specification of the smoke signals. So that the smoke should be, should be one of a uniform color and should emit for at least a period of uh, 15 minutes. And then that uh, not ignite or emit flame during the emitting period. It shouldn't be a smoke that uh, would come up with flame during the emitting period. And it should continue to emit smoke when fully submerged in water for a period of at least 10 seconds. So that's uh, for the live uh, live uh, boy with a uh, self activating smoke signal. 
Then we have the uh, buoyant lifelines. Uh, if you go through the, the specifications, there are all, I think there are more requirements on the smoke, on the live boy self activating smoke signals. Then the buoyant lifelines. Buoyant lifelines required by the regulation. They should have a diameter of uh, not less than 8 mm and a breaking strength of not less than five uh, kilo newton and shouldn't be, uh, the, the line shouldn't be such that it will twist. So it should be lines that will be free and uh, straight. So after that, we have the life jacket. So there are life jacket for the life jacket is categorized into three: one for infant, for child, and for adult. So the way they distinguish it is by the weight and the and the height. So a life boy for an infant, the weight in kilogram should be less than fifteen. That's the weight of the person of the child classified as an infant. That person should weigh less than 15 kilograms. And the height in centimeter is, should be less than 100. Then for a, a person classified as a child is someone who weighs 15 kilograms or more, but less than 43 kilograms. And the height of such person should be 100 centimeter or more but less than 155 centimeter. And for an adult, is someone who weighs above 43 kilograms and of a height of more than 155 centimeter. So for the, uh, for the adult life jacket, it should be constructed in such a way that at least 75% of people who are completely novice or not familiar with the life jacket can co correctly done it within a period of uh, one minute without assistance or guidance. As 75% of people who are not familiar with life jacket. And then after demonstration, all persons should be able to correctly done it within a period of one minute without assistance. Also, the life jacket should be capable of being worn in only one direction or inside out. Even when it is done incorrectly, it should not be such that it will injure the, the person wearing it. So it should be made that uh, simple and uh, yes, that if you done it incorrectly, it will not cause injury to the person wearing it. And then the method of securing the life jacket to the wearer has to be, has to have a, a quick and positive means of closure that do not require, require tying of knot. So it should be comfortable to wear and it should allow the wearer to jump from a height of at least 4.5 meters while holding on to the life jacket. And from a height of at least one meter with your arms held over your head without injury and without dislodging or damaging the life jacket or its attachment. Sir. Yes. So uh, I don't know if I've gone too far. You have. Yeah, so no, fast. That, the, the, no, no, that's brilliant. Uh, I don't know if anybody in the house has uh, 
uh, maybe they feel you've gone too fast. Uh, I think this is brilliant. Thanks for the summary of this. I don't. I, I believe somebody has heard something they never thought about before, or they didn't know it was that deep. You know, they didn't know it was that serious. You just see life jacket and just say, well, it's life jacket, you know. They didn't know that there are regulations, there are things that must be, before that life jacket came on board, you know, what was, what, how, where, you know, it's not just, uh, it is what it is. No, it's not just what it is. Huh? It's serious business because it has to do with saving, saving life, all right? Uh, and uh, I think Beatrice has done a very good job to summarize this for us. Uh, but I don't want us to just take and say, okay, bitches are done it and that's it. I want us to go and read it ourselves so that you can also explain it to other people. Explain it to me. You're not, you're not doing me a favor uh, if you learn these things. Uh, you sound competent. Some of us, uh, and I want everybody to just fall in love with knowledge. You know, the fact that you don't use that knowledge daily does not mean you should not know it. Uh, so that somebody comes on your vessel and tell you something, you tell them, no, no, no. You ask them, you challenge them and say, where did you get this information from what I have read in so so, -so book? It says X, Y, Z. You know, that's where, you know, you just have, you, you, you be like you are in love again, you know, for those that are falling out of love. I don't know. So um, any questions, please? Any comments? Any addition to what uh, Beatrice has um, done beautifully this, this evening? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Adan. Uh, please, I want to ask a question. For, for the live boy, for a specific amount, the vessel can take. Okay, you want to know how many how many live boys can should be on a vessel? Yes. Like okay. some vessels have like 14, others like 12. So I want to know why. Okay. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, there's a question in the house as well before you or yours. <laughs> Is why do we have some 2.5 and the other one is four less than not less than four kg? So we have two questions now. Does anybody want to attend these two questions, please? Okay, I think yeah, I will uh, attempt this. Second I think I can one. attempt one. The second one. I, I, two of you want to attempt the second one. Why don't you want to attempt <laughs> the first one? <laughs> Uh, okay, wait. Let's uh, let's get Bello. Let Bello, since you are speaking, uh, Bello, try the second one. Yeah. Yeah, from my background knowledge during third officers, it stated in this same code, you will find the a vessel of so so meter 100 will be for like that. It stated there. Okay, so you Inside what you said is that code. based on the length of the vessel. Vessel, uh, yeah. yes. There are, there are category of number for each vessel. And for the uh for the weight, it has to be with the one for man overboard light so it has to be lighter so that the light can pull it off from the top of the bridge when landing okay you mean that's to be heavier the one the one on the bridge wing has to be heavier that's the one of four kg so that when you release it it can pull off the yes the light yes okay all right thanks thanks for thanks for trying uh sounds sounds interesting uh, uh beatrice yeah so what's what the answer do you want to give Yes, I wanted to say that it depends on the size of the of the vessel, the size and the type of vessel that determines the carrying uh, capacity for this uh, life jacket or the LSAs in general. Yes, so yes, so that that that, that is correct. Uh, Adanu, uh, the type, the size, the length of the vessel. Uh, you will also see when we get to life raft. You also see why do you have some vessels have one additional life raft forward, you know, of the, of the vessel and others don't have it. So you, that, these are reasons uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> well thought of reasons. So how many life boys will you have on a passenger vessel uh, compared to like an offshore vessel? Uh, if the vessel is, you know, 300 meters long, how many life boys will you have on it compared to a vessel that is uh, maybe 70 meters long? You know, and all that. So, of course, don't forget the 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 flag states will 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 be will be the ones who finally state the amounts that they want in it. So the LSA code will be telling you not less than 
They will not tell you the that, that. Okay, Martin, yeah, yeah, Ma Madami, please go ahead. All right. Um, to the the weight of uh, the live boy at the bridge wind should be heavier. You would have to put into consideration the action of wind when maybe there's a man overboard situation. The um live boy at the bridge wind needs to be heavier. So when you drop it, wind cannot shift the um live boy from the direction you are aiming at. So I think that should also be added into factors to be mm -hmm. I, I like I like I like the, the the thoughts. I like the thoughts behind that. Uh, the wind, the weight. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, however, I, I I'm not so not so sure that would be a very valid reason. Because uh, if you would I appreciate that uh, <laughs> So if you are see, you are see, and the weed will toss you. <laughs> it's a toss. So extra uh, 1.5 kg will really not make much difference to the wind and the waves. But I like the thought. I, I am of the, I think it's more of the, the, your release mechanism. When you pull the pin of your man overboard uh, boy, when you pull that pin, it, the boy is supposed to roll, right? Depending on your arrangement, it's supposed to roll fall freely and the weight should pull your 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 mob arrangement so it's more of that than um than what no, no, no. 1.5 kg would, yes. wouldn't do much is being gives more explanation on this chapter one LSA code. so in the in acts um why no. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, exactly. We are hearing you, Martin. Thanks for explaining to the person that came late. <laughs> yeah, Kembros uh, 007. I like this 007. It looks like James Bond. Yeah, go ahead. Your, your hand is up. You have to unmute yourself, though. Uh, okay, yeah, please speak, Muhammad. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening, okay. everyone. Okay. Yeah, good evening. So I... one person speaks first, eh? Is who is speaking now? Is it Muhammad or Kemru? Okay, uh, let's let's let okay, Muhammad Kamru, speak. You can go ahead first, then I, I will reserve mine after you. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Kemru, okay. go ahead. Okay, my Question: I don't know if Beatrice can uh, come again. You know, for the for donning of the life jacket, he said for a novice, she said something like one minute, and uh, after training, she repeated the same one minute. So I just wanted to be clear. All right, Beatrice. Okay. Over yes, you said uh, according to the code that seventy five percent of people who are not familiar with the life jacket should be able to don it without a uh, guidance within a period of one minute. Then okay. after training, after demonstration, after teaching them how to use it, everyone is then expected to be able to don it correctly, still without assistance for that same okay. period of one minute. Okay, now 100% against 70%, thank you. 75%, yeah. 100 okay. against 75%. Okay, okay. so Thank while you. we are on this live jacket, uh, let me quickly mention that uh, one of the things I've seen again is that when I go on board is I see the live jacket done in instruction and it is not vessel specific. They just put a generic live jacket done in instruction, which is not what exactly what you have on board your vessel. So that would be wrong because a novice or somebody will be looking at the picture, looking at what they have, and it's not the same. So please... Um, find somebody on board your vessel, take a picture, do the done instruction. You don't have to use everything that is in the market because what's in the market might not be what you have on your vessel. So you create your own and make it vessel specific. Okay. Uh, I hope that makes sense. All right. Mohammed, yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good yeah. evening, everyone. Uh, the class is interesting. Uh, thanks, Beatrice, for the heads up and stuff. Um, I have like a little bit clarification. You know, sometimes, like they said, readers. Uh, leaders of course yeah what i want to like ask or chip in is for example like if man of a boat say you have two people that are of a boat at the same time uh, regarding the weight of the of the boy that the, the boy itself so i don't know if 
if the the weight is related to the number of people that it can hold or maybe two people that can walk with one boy which basically is like twice the normal weight of of the life boy i don't know if if that goes with that as well is that you mean for the um man overboard why is one is four kg and the other is 2.5 kg is that what you, is that your question yes that's what i'm even trying to see if there is any relation between maybe it should be in case maybe if maybe two guys or something that oh. they are going to use the same that's why the weight is twice almost twice the normal one or what okay let me allow Beatrice really... to answer this question first uh, let me see how let, let, let's get this from uh Beatrice's perspective Beatrice, you're on the office today sir please can he come by with the question <laughs> okay he's, he's to... ah. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Oh, okay wow. okay um what what he's asking is that could the reason for the man of a bird boy that is four uh, not less than 4 kg be as a result of if two people fall overboard instead of one person no 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 i don't that's not it <laughs> all right that's um, not it at all okay is it an important if it's a very important call please pick up the call don't worry i'll take up uh, this response so that you don't miss the call eh? all right so this is what i think uh muhammad now, if you have two people fall overboard on a vessel, you'll be a very, 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 very popular guy, eh? or a popular captain. So I, I, <laughs> you don't want one person to fall overboard, not a cop two. So yes, but I like this imagination. I like that line of thought to say, okay, buy one, two pound fifty, buy two, four pound. You know, or, you know, yeah, or it's like, if you want to, if you want to do POS, one thousand, you pay two thousand five. You want two, you pay four thousand. Something. Anyway, I'm just joking. Anyway, <laughs> I just try to use what is uh, going on at the moment as a joke. Really. So if you look at it again, I'll try to explain it. You don't want to be able to follow overboard. If one person falls overboard, don't also forget that this MOB boy marker is one is doing doing two things. Eh? Is the person you that you're on board when you release your man overboard boy. Because of the smoke and the light and everything, you know, the ship is always moving or, or maybe moving. Uh, and when you drop it, you can always turn around and still sight your boy, you know, because of the smoke and everything. If you are at sea and there's white horses, rough weather, you won't see anything. Eh? It's very difficult to see things. So that's why in your man of a body, they say maintain a lookout. Let somebody keep an eye on that boy or the person that fell overboard. That's the one. Secondly, is so that the person that is in the water at least will see something and will also be able to swim towards the boy. So, uh, you know, and hopefully they were able to hold on to the boy. All the other boys can help anybody to float, all right? So the man overboard boy is significant because of the additional accessories. It allows you that drop the boy to be able to come back to it when you do your turn, either Williamson or the other turns you're going to make, uh, and the guy in the water to be able to identify and at least they will see a smoke and they will be able to swim towards it. So you see, it has very, it's very important. It's a very important boy. Then the weight is mostly as a result of when you, when, if you go to your bridge wing, depending on what it looks like. And I think somebody should, maybe tomorrow, take a picture of your man overboard. Let's see what the differences are. Share it in the group, your man overboard arrangement on your vessel. Let's see what it looks like. Most times, there's a pin which you will remove the pin and the boy should roll. Now, please don't do this. <laughs> That's what I say you should do. This is very well. I say take picture. I just say remove pin. No. If you remove pin, the boy go. I No deal. Uh -huh. it, normally, when you remove the pin, the boy should roll from the storage area. And when it rolls, the weight should be able to pull your man overboard arrangement that is hanging on the bridge wing. So that's why some people, they put their own man of a board arrangement in such a way that is inside the vessel, is turned inside, not outside. I don't know how that will launch. Okay, so the weight is really about that, not about two people jumping overboard. Please, two people should not jump overboard, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that made some sense, Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, it made some head of actually. All right, then, that's Thank fine. You, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, any any other comments? Uh, JF has said uh, Solas chapter two, but JF doesn't want to speak. He just wants to be dropping, just wants to be dropping uh, 
what do they call this thing that people are dropping? They just drop some lines, some sexy lines. Well, he doesn't want to speak to us. He doesn't like us. He doesn't want us to hear his or our voice. Okay, no problem. Any anything? Any any other question? Any um any yes, comments? Sir. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. So in, on vessels where the MOB boy is stored in such a way that he cannot really uh, roll, what should we do to such uh, vessels and the captain? Okay, no, don't hang the captain and don't crucify him. Don't shoot him as well. All right. So, uh, if you have a, if your your vessel and the MOB cannot roll, maybe that's a ship's design. It's as per design. Maybe it could be the one that you have to throw yourself. Okay, uh, and that that is as per the ship design. There's really nothing much you can do. But the the idea is that by the time you throw the boy or you just lift, let it go, swing it out. It should still pull your man overboard arrangement. Okay, that's the uh, that should be the arrangement. Now there are some vessels whereby that man overboard arrangement is inside the vessel. It will not pull if that boy cannot pull nothing out. You might have to do it manually as well. So in your man overboard procedure on board, you have to capture it that this has to be done manually. It's not the automatic way. It has to be done manually. Now, they have also seen some vessels due to security concern, the way they've caged everybody. Eh? Now, wow, they cage everything, cage the man overboard, cage everything. So, well, I think there's, <laughs> so, you know, now that's where security versus safety, you know, clashes as well. But, you know, you're not going to be on those vessels forever. It's always good for you to have this knowledge at the back of your mind. Uh, while you are growing up, you'll be able to see things before an inspector comes and tell you about it. You suggested it. And if it is what it is, then you do a management of change or update your procedure so that the when the inspector or somebody says, ah, this is wrong, you say, no, it's not wrong. It's right. It's our own procedure. We have factored that this is our limitation and it's part of our man overboard procedure. And you show him in your procedure that says, oh, we don't have the one whereby you can automatically launch. So we have the person that sees should pull the boy, pull the man overboard and throw everything overboard. I, I don't know if you understand my point. If anybody is getting me here. Does it does it does it answer your question or uh, Beatrice? Yes, sir. It does. That's fine. That's fine. Really well 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 done. Any further questions before we round off? Uh, Captain Oliver, are you are you still with us? Uh, do you have any comments? I've not heard from okay, I've heard from Umar briefly. Uh, anybody else? There is a Baba Jide in uh, in uh, in the house. Um, welcome, Baba Jide. I think that that name is not really. I'm not used to that name. Captain Oliver, yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, well done to Beatrice and um, everybody that has participated. I remember when I was a cadet and when my uh, British captain asked me this same question, why? He first of all asked me the differences between the live boy, the one uh, and the man over, used for man overboard, and the one uh, the main deck and the other places on the ship and all that. And how I went to find that says the old things just reminded me of it, and I was uh, really not the answers after reading the LSA code that time. So, um, yeah, it's it's a good uh, lecture to remind me also and every other person in the class. And uh, the answer uh, Beatrice gave for this thing that's all what I have done it to be also the way it is for. You know, the, so that it can pull the uh, the uh, light uh, man overboard arrangement, the light and the smoke signal, and all of that down. Because if it's not um, weighty enough, it won't be able to bring it down. And if it doesn't come down, you're more or less just throwing a live boy and not throwing the marker and all of that, all the other arrangements. So uh, thank you, and um, <laughs> I'm glad that we're all learning and um, the class went well. Thank you, sir. That's my contribution. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, please also, uh, your boys, <laughs> go and confirm that your man overboard arrangement you know, is secured to the live boy. Uh, you don't just show live boy and you, everything is going on. You show, <laughs> <laughs> you show, go and show, be sure that the rope. Also, your pyrotechnics have done since some vessels whereby they replace the cartridge 
for this uh, light train appliances, and they did not connect the <laughs> the cartridge to the to the rope. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just replaced the cartridge alone, and you know they did not connect it. Okay, those are things we're looking out for. And uh, most importantly, if you see all these, these things have expiry dates. And I always want, I want us to kick against fake things because we are the ones that see. If they bring something that looks fake to you, it's not going to work when you need it. Eh? Uh, it's not going to work. So let, let's let's keep that. So next week, we will be doing um, chapter three and chapter four. I think we'll, this is good progress. I want everybody to read it. Don't just, it's not only the people that will be taking the class that will that you read it there. Uh, we'll nominate two people and I will uh, I think uh, Abia will come back for a chat next week. Uh, it's gonna be Divalicious and Abia that will do. Or maybe let's say Divalicious, Abia and who would like to anybody that wants to nominate themselves, anybody wants to just be ready in case those two people cannot call uh, or they want to decide to thin out or Malinga. Anybody in the group would like to take chapter three and four? No, no. Uh, uh, at least a, a lady has done something. Yes, thank you, Mark. Mark, uh, Mark. I know Mark, as I see the name, I know you will not let me down. Anybody that is Mark, if you have Mark in your life, they will not let you down. Except Mark, is that, I, I believe your hand is raised. It means, yes, they are doing chapter three or four. Yeah, that's correct. Um, uh -huh. I said it now. Anything Mark, forget it. You know, pass Mark. You know, that's it. So I know Mark is is capable. So thanks, Mark. Uh, chapter three and four as well. Uh, let me let me see. Where, where is Divalicious? Has she disappeared? No, she's she's still here now. Divalicious, are you are you giving me a thumbs up for next week as well? Give thumbs up now. Raise hand. Let's see that you are there. She has disappeared. Okay, well, all right. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I think this was really useful. And don't keep this not information to yourself or this knowledge to yourself. Share with somebody. Share with your boyfriend. Share with your girlfriend. Just tell them, you know, you know, you know, something like that. They will think you're crazy, but uh, just do it, okay? Uh, yes, uh, and have a beautiful evening and um, rest of the week. Thank you very much. Hey, thank yeah. you, Captain.